All right, so today, today we're gonna talk about uh, pretty much that intro. Now I gained a little bit of inspiration, or well, a lot of inspiration from James Matthews. Now I don't know if you guys know who James Matthews is. He's an English cinematographer, filmmaker, whatever you wanna call him, content creator. He is incredible at his craft. And with the limited amount of gear that he has, he is by far one of the best. Um, he's definitely underrated in the game and I really think you guys should check him out. Link is in the description below if you wanna check out his channel. I got uh, a lot of inspiration from his handheld B-roll sequence that he did in the kitchen. Now this just blew my mind away. Just how simple some of the movements are, yet it was just, it made it so cinematic and incredible looking. Like, it, it essentially, you just don't need a gimbal. Essentially, you don't need a gimbal, you just need the camera and your hands. So there was another YouTuber, Daniel Schiffer, recreated the works of what uh, James Matthews did, but obviously created his own personal flair to it. Now, this is my creation to both their videos and creating my own personal flair to it. And the thing that makes it my own is that I've got my bub in it. Um, I've been adding her in a lot of my videos just to have a bit of fun. To really, I really actually want it for so when uh, she gets older, she can actually look back on those videos and be like, Dad, what the hell? Why, why'd you use me? Give me my money. Do I, do I get money from this? No. I, I just wanted to look back on this video and just see how much fun I had with her making these videos because, you know, it's just a whole nother level uh, creating videos by yourself. Um, but it's another level creating videos with your family, you know, it's, it's really fun to do and I absolutely enjoy it. But anyway, enough about the mumbo jumbo, let's get straight into video. So the first tip I wanna tell you guys is that uh, I used a wide lens. So what a wide lens actually does is it allows all those micro jitters to pretty much not be as noticeable. So if you essentially use a, a shorter focal length, you're gonna be a little bit better off. But the thing with the shorter focal length is you're gonna get more in frame. I'm using the 17 to 28, which is that brand new Tamron lens. I absolutely love it. Link is in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. Also, the video is right here. Ding. Where was I? Damn it. Where was I? 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 Hmm. Did you guys also check out my video of the Freewell filters? Magnetic filters. Boom. Focus. Focus. Focus! Free well. Look at this. Magnetic filters. Check it out up there. Where was I? Wide angle lens. So wide angle lens essentially makes those micro jitters a lot less noticeable. It does help if you do have vibration reduction, OSS, whatever your camera company calls it. I've got the Sony a7 III, so it has IBIS, in-body uh, image stability. Um, you could use the EOS R, which has uh, EIS, I think electronic stability. Uh, you could even get the lenses that have the VR or OSS on it as well. So that will help with the micro jitters. But the technique is within uh, your hand movements. If you have nice, smooth hand movements, you are going to get less micro jitters. If you're trying to hold the camera in a static position, you're actually going to notice the camera jitters. If you do slight, smooth hand movements, that is the key. That's what I've found is the key when you do smooth hand movements. You will have to do a couple of takes, depending on what you shoot as well. If you have actors or an, a, a subject that's going to be moving, you're gonna have to tell them well, what you want from the scene, what you want to achieve. And then you're gonna figure out uh, what their actions will be then you'll be able to figure out what your actions will be to move with it. Rolling and action. Yeah, I think that got it. Uh, 
Um, it does help if you do a little bit of storyboarding or understand, uh, I suppose, the story that you're trying to uh, portray. Now, my story was changing my baby's nappy. So it's pretty basic. The, the, the initial um, story is her nappy's dirty. The outcome I want is to have the nappy changed. Pretty simple story. Um, I just, all I did is went through the steps of changing the nappy. So it's pretty basic. Uh, we ran through it beforehand, so we knew exactly uh, what uh, she was doing, where she was going, what she was grabbing. Take two. Yeah, I can do two, yeah. So it'll be yeah. one, two. And then put it down. And put that down. Yeah, yeah. so that, okay. One, two, put it down. One, two. One sec, I'll just grab focus. Rolling and action. No, sorry, go again. Sorry, pull both. <laughs> Rolling, action. Let's have a look. Uh, that is really important because a lot of the grabbing motions um, can be really dramatic where well, you can make it look really dramatic because she can do a whole bunch of tossing things up into the air or uh, zooming in, zooming out. There was one cool little one where I uh, went over the top, zoomed in, followed the subject. She ripped the nappy apart. I zoomed out as she did that. Um, now I did shoot everything in manual focus. Now you have to, have to use manual focus on this. It's just, it's almost impossible to use autofocus because the camera just won't be able to uh, focus on what you want it to focus on. Um, a lot of professionals, a lot of film sets will actually use manual focus because it gives you the control of where you are going to focus. With this particular B-roll, manual focus is key. With regular B-roll outside, uh, longer distances, autofocus auto will probably be your best bet. Manual focus is really, really hard to get tack sharp focus unless you have a good focusing system. Um, but uh, like I said, with this B-roll, manual focus, just give it a go, chuck it in manual focus and start practicing uh, racking focus manually. It would help if you do have a little bit of a rig and a focus puller, um, but you can just hold the lens and rack focus like that perfectly fine. You've just got to make sure also that you put focus peaking on if your camera has it. That would be uh, very helpful because um, you can make the focus peaking uh, red and you'll see uh, the hand will start to light up red. This is mine, mine little, looks like I'm trying to milk a cow or something or milk a cat, I don't know. Um, if you, it's little dots, little dots, little red dots is what I'm trying to get after is you'll see a whole bunch of little red dots and lines and stuff um, where the focus plane is. Anyway, you can change it to yellow or, or, or white as well in some cameras, uh, but red just seems to be very easy to see, especially with um, your surroundings. Also, one thing that you want to be able to do as well is uh, set up your lighting. So lighting is very, very important when it comes to a lot of these cinematic B-roll sequences. Um, using natural light is great, but using um, your own light can make things look so much more contrasty, so much more aesthetically pleasing. Um, key light is obviously important, you need a key light but it's the back lights, the rim lights, and also the practical lights in the background. So let's say there's a lamp in the background. It can sometimes be useful to turn that lamp on. You've got that contrast between uh, your foreground and background, which kind of helps. Now I did use uh, an LED panel, the Iwata LED panel, which I've actually, no, that one. So that one there, I use that uh, Iwata 03, GL03. Uh, link is up there and in the description below if you wanna check out that video on that LED panel. It's an RGB light, which is really, really, really cool. So I used that light there to light up the wall, that nice teal sort of color. I've used uh, the GL01, which is an Iwata light again. They're just really cheap, small LED panels, which I've got as my uh, 
my rim light. I used that as a practical in the corner just for that nice sort of tungsten look. So I had the whole teal and orange sort of feel going on. So that's it from me guys. Please hit that like button if you found this useful. Comment below if you guys uh, have any questions on my video, on my gear that I use, uh, any more questions on this technique. Um, like I said, quick shout out to James Matthews uh, and Daniel Schiffer for producing their content and really inspiring me to do my own version. Guys, my name's Jason Morris and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. All right, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this again. Free well filters. Look at this, it's a lens cap. Snap it straight on.